unbelievably, this year uh, is it, five years since we lost Peter Brock. Can you believe it's mm. five years already? Amazing. Years, yeah. Yeah. Who here can remember where they were when they heard that Peter Brock had been killed? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? Sometimes motorsport kills its kings just to remind us just how dangerous it is. He was the most charismatic of all the drivers, wasn't he? Ed, Ed yeah. Senna, when you think about yeah, it Yeah, Jim well. Clark, yeah. another one. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Never been replaced. So in many ways, he was almost like the David Beckham of motor racing mm, in Australia. Absolutely. He transcended the sport. And we thought, given that it's such a significant moment, that we should go and find somebody who knew Peter Brock in a way that very few people did. Peter Brock won his first Bathurst in 1972 and went on to become the undisputed king of the mountain. He won again in 75, but it really kicked off in 78 when he won three in a row, a feat he repeated from 82 to 84. But every great hero needs a nemesis, and Peter Brock had one. A roughneck Queenslander by the name of Dick Johnson. The Commodore is giving away 50 horsepower to the other cars. Common sense says it can't leave them, yet it is. Brock and his nimble car are achieving the unexpected. Do you remember where you were and, and what you're doing when you heard that, that Peter had been killed? Well, those sort of things you, you tend not to believe when you first hear them. And uh, then my phone started ringing constantly with um, journalists, with uh, television people, with all of these sort of people saying, you know, we want to come and... I just end up turning my phone off. Mm. Because uh, I just don't like talking about those sort of things. Mm. Just depended on the day you got Peter as to which Peter you would get. And uh, there was a serious one, there was the jovial one, and there was the the guy that used to, I suppose, pretend in a lot of ways. He would, uh, I think, with Peter's downfall uh, in in that sort of mode was he'd believe his own bullshit. Mm. And I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. I'm just saying that uh, you got to know when you're telling yourself the truth. I was disappointed that that he didn't make a decision earlier where where I did because but Brock he was just such a competitive person that he would never believe that he wasn't as good as the first day he ever got in a car and that was just the nature of the person and and I, I felt uh, a, a bit hurt that that he sort of he kept going like that to the point where it uh, it took his life how should we remember him As a guy who, uh, who got the most out of life in many different ways, because he was many different people. Mate, there'd be, there'd, there'd be a lot of people who would be, I don't know whether shocked or surprised is the word, about, about how honest Dick is with that, about the relationship. Yeah. I mean, you, you were there, you were a journalist on the mountain in the, in the heyday when, when those boys were up against each other. I mean, how would you describe their relationship? I mean, they were competitors in quotes. Yeah, things. they were vastly different people. I mean, mm. Dick Johnson had come up the hard way. He was a really hard nut Queenslander who'd never had enough money to do what he wanted to do and worked on his own cars, battled and scraped. And, you know, there were times I think Dick felt and I think other competitors mm. felt that Brock had had it a little easier, that yeah. he'd had the car company behind him, that he hadn't necessarily had to slave away the way they and, had. I mean, no one's denying he was an incredible driver, oh, he though. Was. Yes. But it was just it was some had an easier road well, than what, others. What, I think what Dick's alluding to was the fact that for some, or big part of Peter's career, there was a fair bit of controversy of, of one kind or another. And that sort of upset a lot of the other drivers because yeah. he was picked up by the Holden racing team and, you know, went on from their Holden dealer team as it yeah. was back then. And then he went on to, to drive and then had controversy around him a lot of the time, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. But there was a lot of respect between them and that's why I think Dick can speak so honestly. And, you know, given 
how special that relationship was and how special a person and a race driver Peter Brock was, we thought that we should take this one step further. We should put Dick Johnson in the car in the A9X that Peter won Bathurst in. By the way people gathered around, you could tell this was something special. And the first thought Dick Johnson had on getting into the A9X? My ass is no bigger than Brock's, which I feel good about. <laughs> 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 I'm going to drive it like I stole it. <laughs> so when Brocky drove this car, it was basically a massive cigarette packet. And that's illegal for us to broadcast. So we turned to some high-tech methods to cover it up. I used to love Brocky's style. The way he used to chuck the car into corners. The way he had them set up was quite amazing, really. Don't think much of his tack overs. It's all over the place like a mad dog's breakfast. Holden and Ford fans, do not adjust your sets. This is Dick Johnson in Peter Brock's A9X. So sit back and enjoy one of the greats driving one of the greats. I can't believe how easy Brocky did it. I would have loved to have given him a ride in my Falcon. See how hard we used to work because the car was obviously a lot heavier and certainly a lot heavier on the steering. Ah, uh, well, that's the other way Brock would love to drive it, just like this, arm out the window, doing it so easy. Oh, how good's that? I've been coming here since 78 watching that car go in. That was just fantastic. The sound of that engine just takes you straight back because they use a Chevrolet engine today, but that was a Holden 308. And the sound of that, it's just bad hair and it's Malcolm Fraser and it's Magnum PI and it's Levi's Bogart jeans. say this has been an absolute pleasure just to really know how the other half did it. Great association we had and should I say quite a good friendship because uh, the thing that I think more so than anything else is the fact that we we really uh, with each other we respected each other. Well, there's one thing I forgot to tell Rocky. Back in 1983. 1983, I should have said, thanks, mate, for picking me up here after I uh, had the incident with the trees. He actually drove me back to the pits, which I thought was very kind of him. So thanks, mate, and thanks for the opportunity.